That's why I say that the next big tech role is going to be of an AI engineer. Hey everyone, hi, Harshit Tyagi, this site. With more than $1 billion in revenue just from startups, we've seen some early signs of success in AI. And now every tech company is trying to infuse their products, their customer support bots, their departments with these generative AI capabilities. Now, AI is at the same junction where internet was back in the late 90s. But what does it mean for us, the programmers, the data scientists, the analysts? I think this is probably the best time to start building with AI. Why now? To spot the trend, I looked at Y Combinator's portfolio of companies. And for those of you who do not know Y Combinator, Y Combinator is a prestigious uh, startup accelerator based in US. And they've backed many startups uh, which have now become tech giants uh, such as Airbnb, Dropbox, Stripe uh, and Reddit. And here's what I got. Look at the number of companies building with AI from 2017 to 2023. There has been a significant rise in the number of companies building with AI since 2021. And then it shot up after the launch of ChatGPT in 2022. Now, this gives us some confidence that there are going to be more and more companies building with AI in the near future, which as a result will lead to increased demand for AI engineers. We've seen that there is enough demand for AI engineers. Every company is trying to build something with AI. And the AI development space also has evolved enough with open source large language models, with readily available APIs. Now, anybody can get started very quickly. With that, even the community has grown enough to provide you the required support whenever you get stuck. But when we say that you have to get started, what does it mean? There are so many questions to answer. The first thing is, you know, what all is going on in that industry? So I tried to create this AI development canvas of sort which captures the different layers where most of the work is being done in AI. As you can see, there are three main development layers. On the left hand side, I have tried to capture the kind of people who work within these layers. And on the right hand side, you see the subfield, the tasks, the kind of companies and the tools that are being used within those layers. The first layer, the application layer. Now, this is where applications, the real products are being built on top of our large language models, on top of the AI generative AI capabilities. And this is the most buzzing layer. Real use cases, real value. This is where the money is. Most of the companies are coming up with these applications. And what does it entail? The kind of work you are basically developing interfaces. Some would be developing chatbots. Some would be developing tools to create uh, and draft articles using generative AI. Then you are developing rag pipelines, which is retrieval augmented generation pipelines. We'll talk about, we'll understand all these use cases in the come upcoming videos. Then some people are building multi-agent workflows and then there is obviously monitoring and evaluation involved at every step of uh, the development process, be it model development or application development. And now let's come to the second layer, which is the model development layer. This is where companies like OpenAI, Google, Meta are developing large language models. Now, the kind of people who are working here AI researchers, applied scientists, data scientists. And the kind of work that they do entails everything from data set curation, data engineering, to model development, to inference optimization, such that you know they are able to generate those tokens at a very, very quick speed. And again, model evaluation and model benchmarking is a huge 
and um, the most complex task, which is where a lot of research work is also being put in. The third layer is the infrastructure layer, which underpins or provides support to both model development as well as the application layer. This is where compute management, you know, uh, companies which are providing uh, GPU services, uh, companies like Coreweave, companies like Lambda Labs, these companies, they provide services such that you can now rent GPUs and then train your large language models, pre-train them and also provide storage services, storage management, data management services to you. And again, the cloud services providers like uh, AWS, Google Cloud Platform, they all are working within this infrastructure layer such that your models perform better, they are deployed and they are serving their inferences at a very quick speed. And the kind of people who are working here, cloud architects, data architects, hardware engineers, cloud engineers. Given the highest traction in the application layer, it has now led to an increased demand for a special kind of engineer. People who know how to build on top of AI. While there is no standard or specific term for these engineers, most companies are calling them AI engineers or LLM engineers. And while I was recording this video, I came across this amazingly detailed blog post by Chip Huyen on the 900 most popular open source tools, where she said, with readily available models, anyone can develop applications on top of them. This layer has seen the most action in the last two years and is still rapidly evolving. This layer is also known as AI engineering. So what do these AI engineers do? How do we define the role of an AI engineer? So AI engineers are basically specialized programmers who have the skills to leverage AI technologies to build comprehensive and form agnostic applications. Now, when I say form agnostic, basically you should be able to build wide variety of application, starting from you know simple chat interfaces to complex full stack applications, Python packages, libraries, or even complete SDKs, software development kits. Now, unlike AI researchers, who delve deep into the foundations of algorithms and model training, AI engineers are required to only apply AI technologies to build real applications. But again, the question arises, don't you need to be an expert in AI in order to become an AI engineer? And the short answer is no. Let me explain why. Just like when you start swimming, you don't learn about the physics of buoyancy, right? And similarly, when you are required to build on top of AI, you don't need to learn how, you know, transformer architecture actually works. You simply need to know how to leverage it. Obviously, depending upon the use case, you can, if it requires deep expertise uh, in AI, in deep learning, in machine learning, then that understanding could be advantageous. But again, depends on the problem statement that you have. Let's also draw a line between AI researchers and AI engineers. What is the difference between these two profiles? Okay, in order to do that, I've created this diagram where I have plotted the engineering skills against the AI research skills. Okay, on the x-axis, I have the engineering skills. Think like, you know, building something using the APIs. And on the y-axis, I have the research skills. Think something like, you know, designing model architectures, creating training models, uh, curating data sets. Okay. Now, AI researchers, research scientists, data scientists, these are folks who have deep expertise in AI. These are the people who are actually training those models. Okay. So they're high on this y-axis. Whereas I have a different persona, you know, core engineers, full stack engineers, backend engineers, front end engineers, data engineers, who do not know much about AI, but they are really good engineers. So they are towards the right, high on the engineering axis. Now, in order to bridge the gap between 
the AI research skill versus the engineering skill, we need this specialized engineers who can build on top of those AI technologies. And this is where AI engineers actually come into the picture. These are the AI engineers who are going to build those real applications. You must be wondering if AI researchers are people who have good engineering skills, they have deep expertise in AI, then why don't companies hire them over AI engineers? And that's a fair question. The answer to this is scarcity. We do not have enough AI researchers or LLM researchers, which in turn leads to increased cost. And on top of that, all the top LLM researchers or AI researchers are already cornered by the giants like Meta, Google, OpenAI, Anthropic. That's why I say that the next big tech role is going to be of an AI engineer. We need a special class of professionals who can serve as the bridge between cutting edge research and building practical applications on top of it. To ensure wider accessibility and implementation of these AI technologies. Now you might ask me, what about traditional ML problems? Will everything be solved using generative AI? So the answer is no. While traditional ML problems like recommender system, fraud detection and anomaly detection will continue to get better, we have a whole new range of AI applications to cater to. And as the co-founder of Hugging Face, Clem, said, AI is the new paradigm to build all technology. Thus, we need more and more AI engineers. I mean, look at this generative AI market map from Sequoia. Application layer is filled with use cases and companies in almost every domain. So to put this all together, we have callouts from the industry leaders, deep experts in AI, like Andre Karpati, Chip Huyen, and Clem, amongst many others. Then big incubators like Y Combinator, VC firms, angels, who have been investing in AI companies. And they are going long in AI, which proves that this is the next big paradigm to build all technology. Then I talked about the gap between AI research and engineering, which can only be bridged with this new class of professionals of AI engineers. Lastly, the fourth point, which is the growing ecosystem for AI powered applications. Now with developer tools, with cloud platforms, with the open source repositories and projects that people are developing in this space. And on top of that, we have a growing community to support you in this journey to become an AI engineer, which is obviously always great to have. So that is why I feel that this is the next big tech role. And I hope I was convincing enough and I could share my discovery with all of you. Now, in the next video, which is dropping this Saturday, I'm going to be sharing a comprehensive roadmap to become an AI engineer, along with the learning resources to develop the required skills. So consider subscribing to my channel, click on the bell icon so that you get notified when that video goes live. Up until then, keep learning, keep building.